Hi, welcome back to Chinese Medicine Podcast. And today on Chinese Medicine Study Buddy, I thought I'd share with you some exam techniques and some things that you could do to help you pass your exams and get through the stressful period. Um, well, you're not necessarily going to pass your exams with these things. <laughs> you still have to put in the work, um, of course. But um, I've been a student many times um, in, in, you know, at university, at college, when I studied Chinese medicine, obviously high school and all that kind of stuff. And it, look, it can be incredibly stressful exam time. And some students just do better at exams, some do better at assignments, um, some do better as practitioners. Um, in my years and years of teaching, I've seen all sorts of situations. I've seen some students that I thought were going to be amazing practitioners. Like, like out of all of the students, they probably got the highest marks in their studies, but then when that came down to practicing in the real world, well, they weren't as good as they weren't weren't anywhere near as good as their, um, you know, <laughs> as their papers said. So the reason why I'm saying that is because don't be don't be discouraged. You might not be great at academia, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be a great practitioner. And so you've got to stick through it. You've got to keep going. Um, you know, some people just find exams and um, studying really hard and they just can't wait to kind of get out of it. And Chinese medicine practitioners in general have to be committed to a lifelong learning. And you have to be committed to memorization more than a lot of other professions, I think, even though you've got Google and even though you've got all these things that you can use. And look, I love using apps. I've got little apps for looking up stuff for herbs now that I never had when I was studying. But you can't be reliant on that stuff in the clinic, you have to memorize things and you have to know things off of the cuff off your head out of your head and the more you know the better you're going to be able to help your help your patients um, the more stuff you know in memory the more stuff you've memorized the better you're going to be able to help your patients so um, let's get into it today I thought we would um, I've even written some little notes for you <laughs> I don't normally write notes for my videos so these are my study tips um, for things now the first thing to recognize is you know when exams are coming up, you know when assignments are going to be due. And usually these two things coincide together. There's a lot of assignments due and a lot of exams coming up at the same time. So th there's other things you can do in your life to kind of prepare for stressful times. And I do this all the time in business. Like I've run several businesses at once um, simultaneously that are really busy and I've been studying. I did my master's um, degree at Curtin Uni and I did that like I used to have to pull two all-nighters a week to get that done. Now that's not the normal thing <laughs> that people do. But I used to spend literally not sleep two nights a week. Um, and maybe sleep two hours or three hours or something like that. You know, on a regular basis to be able to fit everything in my schedule because I wanted to kind of get so much stuff done. So I know what it's like to be busy and I know what it's like to kind of have the pressure on. But you can't live like that all the time. And so you have this ebb and flow, you have these ups and downs. Um... And so if you know when a stressful time is coming, then you can schedule other stuff around that. You can, you can give yourself a bit of room. So just simple things can help ease the stress. Um, simple things like making sure your washing's done and you've got clean clothes to wear. You've got something regular to wear that you don't have to think about wearing every day. Like if you decide, I'm going to wear this as a uniform, like you might just say, I'm going to have a student uniform. Go, go and buy a set of scrubs or something like that and just use that as your uniform. It's, you'd be surprised how less stressful it is when you don't have to pick your, pick your clothes every day. But just knowing that these things are ready for me, I don't have to think about that. Making sure that you've got enough food, um, you might do your meal prepping, you might make healthy meals and put them in the freezer and have them ready to go. Um, enlisting the help of other people around you is really important. You might have people that want to support you. And if you said to your auntie or your uncle or, you know, your neighbor or someone like that that's said, hey, if you ever need some help, um, I'm here to help you. Could you just make me some frozen meals and, put, and I'll put them in my freezer for my exam time? And then you don't have to think about cooking. You, know, you might be a single person at home and that might help you or you might have a family I um, mean, you might need someone just to look after your kids while you do some study or something like that. Um, you know, there's lots of different circumstances. But what I'm getting at is you can plan the best you can so that you can have the best chance to succeed. I used to always, um, always, <laughs> I used to often go to the local library to do some study um, when I was um, doing my master's degree, I think it was. Um, 
I was living with other people in the house and sometimes they'd be noisy and it would just be distracting and I, I, I used to find the internet was incredibly distracting like I mean now a lot of study is kind of done on the internet but if I wanted to just sit there and write an assignment um, I would go somewhere where I couldn't be distracted with other things you know just delete the Facebook app off your phone if you have to delete your Instagram app off your phone so you're not kind of constantly going in and pressing those things and and getting distracted and certainly turn off the notifications on your phone so you're not kind of having boop, 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 things popping up all the time it's very distracting when especially if you're trying to write an assignment getting in that zone and you're like you know I used to turn everything else off except for just that computer no internet and just sit there and do my writing um, it's a little bit of a different story now if you have to do your research on the internet but you just need to be disciplined sort of to stick to that one thing but definitely getting the help of other people if you can and knowing that you're going to go through a stressful time what are what are some other things you could organize in advance so that you don't have to you know have it so bad have it so difficult for yourself so you got so that so the first tip is like prepare to be busy it's not a surprise that you're going to be busy prepare prepare yourself to be busy make sure you've got healthy snacks um, one of the things that's really good for studying is nuts. Nuts are a great study thing. Um, in Chinese medicine, we know that the studying is a um, a yi and a yi intellect kind of aspect. So it's consuming your spleen chi more, um, and so you need to support your spleen chi. So the worst thing you can do is eat sort of dampening fatty, <laughs> you know, dampening snacks, um, packet foods. Try to avoid that stuff. So um, yeah prepare your meals it would be a really good tip that I could probably give you um, and then in, in in assignment writing before we get to exams just give you one tip about that um, often I find when I read people's assignments that have trouble either English is not their first language or they just are not articulate in writing like some people are very good at writing and they just their writing flows and they love it and they feel good about doing it and other people are like oh I just don't feel like I can write very well one of the most common tips I'd give to students is to read what you've written out loud, like you would read a book. Now, I always remember when I used to be in primary school, you know, and your teacher would go around and ask people to read out loud. Some people were just petrified of reading out loud. Like, you know, it's obviously you're on the spot and things like that. And so it might bring up horrible things like that where you think, oh, no, I don't want to read it out loud. You don't have to read it out loud to a group of people. Just read it out loud to yourself. But as you read things out loud, you can usually work out whether the sentences are making sense or not, or whether the flow of something's not making is making sense. Especially if you've got a very long sentence with too many commas and you need to put some, you know, punctuation in there or something like that. Um, and just to, if you have, if you, if the way you speak is often the way you write. So people that speak with um, correct English will generally write better. Um, or if you know how to speak with correct English. So even then, I was going to say, write with good English. Well, that's not correct English to say I write with good English. Um, and so the English language is a difficult language. It's not an easy language to write in. Um, and especially writing something in an academic sense. The more you read academic papers, the easier it'll be to kind of write in that style. So that'd be my my number one thing I think could improve lots of people's writing if, you, if that's an area you struggle in, just to read it out loud. Um, or to have someone else read it out loud to you, um, that might that might help. Um, and then also to enlist the help of someone else just in your reading. They don't, they're not contributing to writing the assignment because that would be like plagiarism and you know, you're not asking them to write it for you, but you're just asking them to help you with your grammar um, to you know get another person's perspective on, on on reading it and how it reads, how it, how it sounds. Okay, so that's about the assignments. Um, now, in exams, I know people can be super duper stressed. So having things prepared and getting things organized and being um, familiar with things and having your routine as best as you can on the day will help you tremendously if you're a very stressful person. Uh, there's a great book by, um, what's the guy's name? Um, Drunk Tank Pink, it's called, by Adam Atler. Um, that talks about how people perform in different environments um, based on like the world within you, the world around you, the world between us, that kind of stuff. And one of the research things he quotes in there says, like, I'll ask you this question. How do you think you'd perform better on a rainy day or better on a sunny day in an exam? Answer it for yourself. What do you think you'd do better? <laughs> if you've been in one of my classes before, you probably know the answer because I always ask students that question. Um, 
So it's the, the answer is you're probably more likely to perform well on a rainy day than you would on a sunny day. Lots of people think, oh, I've performed well on a sunny day because I feel good about myself, I feel happy. But you actually, your brain is more likely to remember facts when you are in a state of being more vigilant because of rain. So when it's raining and stormy particularly, you know, people are, are much more vigilant. Um, because they think, oh, I might have an accident on the road, or I might slip over, or something like that. So your your brain's in that higher vigilant state, and when you're in a higher vigilant state, you're actually more likely to recall facts. So <laughs> you could listen to some rain sounds beforehand, um, but just if you're doing the exams in a stormy time, that's a benefit to you. <laughs> just a little tip. <laughs> just a little tip for the tip on the side. Um, so that's something to to, to consider. <laughs> um, and yeah, okay, and so prepare prepare yourself. Um, if you're a really highly stressed person and you find that um, you know things that relieve the stress for you, you could do those things. So exercise is a good thing. You know, Doing regular exercise stops chi stagnation. So bending and stretching and opening, moving your body, um, you know, doing stuff like that, and that helps reduce the amount of adrenaline. So if you're very, very, very stressed about, like what I used to do before I jumped on stage to do a song when I was kind of, younger singer and stressed or anxious and the adrenaline will be pumping inside you and your heart will be going and you'll be thinking oh what if i make a mistake what if i do it wrong is i would just um like jump up and down 10 times <laughs> behind the stage where no one can see you um so that it would release all that adrenaline like it just goes it gets out of your system before you do that and i've done lots and lots of public speaking to large groups of people and that's also something that you can do if you've got the chance to do it um i was listening to someone um talk about they'd seen tony robbins before he d did one of his things and they said oh he's got this like mini trampoline behind the stage and he jumps up and down his trampoline getting into his getting in his zone like doing his haka or something like that and like yeah, that's great. So whatever gets you in the zone, right, to, to perform the best you can, do that. Don't Who cares about what other people think about what you're doing, right? But the adrenaline thing is a big one. So if you can release that adrenaline, um, you know, by f doing something physical, if you're, if you're lining up at that exam room and you're sweating and you are, you know, your heart's racing and you're just one of those people that freaks out, I know a few students that are kind of like that, then um, do something physical just before you jump in that room to kind of release that adrenaline before you get before you get in there um so that's a good thing to do um and then also mindfulness and breathing can help so you could do something super duper physical like you could make sure you do your morning exercise before the exam if you've got time to do that um but then also just in the exam if you find yourself being stressed out if you if you're used to practicing mindfulness techniques um, a really easy and quick one is where you just um, bring your attention to three things or five things you can see. So like you would just sort of look around the room and go, okay, I can see a light, I can see a shelf, I can see a floor, I can see a door, I can see a box, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, three things you can hear. So you might hear, listen to the sound, oh, I can hear a car go past, I can hear you know Johnny writing with his pen I can hear this I can hear that so you're not sort of judging and thinking oh Johnny's writing a lot he must know all the answers um <laughs> you're just noticing those sounds right you might hear like you know someone's jacket sound or clothing moving or something like that and it brings your attention away from everything else that's in your head into that present moment so that's a good little exercise you can do um you could do exercise where you slow your breathing down and you just focus on your breathing so um, lots of schools teach mindfulness techniques now and there's lots of stuff you can watch on the internet to kind of do that as well. Um, so then my next tip, and this is like the best tip, someone told me this once, I don't know who it was, but you know, a teacher, I think it was in high school when I was doing my um, like final year exam. So in Australia we used to call it the TEE, showing my age now, <laughs> people watching this. Um, he, he said to me, um, you know, students, when you get your exam paper, you don't have to answer question one first. And I was like, what? Well, that's first. Wouldn't you answer that first? Like, that's what you think as a student. And that was one of the best bits of advice I've ever gotten. He's like, okay, go through the paper. So sometimes you get 10 minutes or five minutes of reading time first. So when you're going through that reading time, one of the things I look at is how many, pa how many questions are here. 
how much time have I got allotted? So you just know, you're not sort of getting stuck on question one thinking, I don't know this. And you've been stuck on it for 15 minutes and you and you get through and you think, oh no, I've, I know so much about the other part and I didn't you know, know any of that. Sometimes in exams you're given a choice, you can answer case one, two or three. Um, and that would be, you know, something you'd make note of in the reading time. But you can also make note of something that just picks you. You think, oh, I know that. I know that answer. Yes, I know that answer. Why do you answer that first? Because it gives you confidence. And you think, yes, I know this. Right, I've studied this. This is the thing I, <laughs> this is the thing I memorized, right? Um, sometimes I would go into an exam and do what they call a brain dump. So they often give you a piece of paper or you're allowed to ask for a piece of paper. And I remember when I did biochemistry, I couldn't remember, you know, things as I would just find it hard. There was lots of things to remember. So I had sort of memorized that Krebs cycle and I just sort of got this piece of paper and I just kind of scribbled it all out and, you know, scribbled out my flow charts or my acronyms or things like that. Things that you've got, that you've wrote, learned, that you know. Okay. So herbal formulas is, a, is another good example of a subject like Chinese herbal formulas where you've just got to memorize a lot of stuff. And I used to have all these acronyms or little songs or things like that to kind of remember them. So if you want to jot those things down, you could do that. We could just do that in the margin of your paper or something like that in case you needed it later on. Because sometimes you've memorized and it feels like it's right at the front of your brain. And if I get it out now, it's there and then I can use that. Those kinds of tips are, are useful. Like if you um, answer the first question that you know, okay, great. And then my final thing that I want to say, and this is going to sound <laughs> dumb, I think, or obvious, Maybe, but um, you'd be surprised how many exams I've marked that there's no answer. There's nothing there. And you need to find this out for your own school, whether they penalise you for putting something there if it's wrong or if you have nothing. So some schools have a system where they mark you, they take a mark off if you've got a, a wrong answer. They give you a minus mark because, especially in a medical sense, I know in Western medicine that's how they often mark students because they think if you said, um, you know, oh, the patient is dying, what? three drugs should you give them and you just put any three and you got that wrong well you might have killed the patient right so they often mark you wrong if you put nothing you don't get a minus mark you just don't get a mark so you need to check this first before you before you use this system <laughs> but in an exam if you write nothing you can't get a mark for it you get nothing at all so if you think you know the answer put something in the space <laughs> don't leave it blank so what I would suggest you do is go through the exam write everything out that you know and then before if you, you know if you're thinking of leaving early or you know you just feel like oh I've got I've got nothing for this thing I don't know what it is um you know then maybe spend a couple of minutes doing some mindfulness if you you know just to try to relax and then think I'm going to write the best thing I know in here um at least you've got a chance of getting a mark you've got no chance of getting you know <laughs> you can only get zero for putting nothing at all um and so that's um that they're my they're my study tips <laughs> For students um, so the stress be prepared prepare to be busy um, it's not a new thing you know it's coming up if you've, you've done this before <laughs> you, you, you've, you've probably done exams before um, and if you, it's your first year and your first semester well welcome <laughs> welcome to the world but um, if you have done this before it's stressful and <laughs> you know that you're gonna be busy so prepare yourself um, you know in your exams write something down um, use mindfulness, use breathing, use um, exercise to kind of help you with the adrenaline of things um, and the order of questions, you know, answer something that, um, answer something you know first and that gives you a sense of a win, um, that gives you a sense of achievement before you've kind of gotten bogged down in the bulk of the exam. So I hope this has been useful and helpful to you um, and if you've got your own exam tips, you might have something special that you do, um, please put it in the comments below because I think other people could benefit from knowing about it as well and um, I look forward to seeing you again on the next video soon. Oh, and good luck with your exams. <laughs> I hope you do well. I hope you pass and, uh, well, not just pass. I hope you do really well. And I want to encourage you on your journey of learning Chinese medicine. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again on the next video.